Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a cubic equation. We have x cubed equals 3x squared plus 3x plus 1, and we're going to be solving for x values. So I'll be presenting two methods, and let's start with the first one. For my first method, I'm going to use the cubic formula, but the solutions are not going to be that complicated. This is a really nice example that can be used with the cubic formula because we also need to get rid of x squared. But first, let's go ahead and put everything on the same side. So I'm going to go ahead and subtract everything. I know this looks like something familiar to you, but let's go ahead and save it for the second method. Now, here's what we can do. We want to get rid of x squared. So in other words, we want to make this a depressed cubic, right? So we're going to go ahead and use substitution. Let's replace x with y plus 1. Let me tell you how we get that number. It's usually x equals y plus some number k, and then you plug it in, and the result will have no y squared in it. So that you can find the k value. But as a shortcut, here's what you can do. You can go ahead and take the coefficient of x squared, which is negative 3 in this case, right? And then you can go ahead and divide it by the highest power, which is 3, and then negative 3 divided by 3 is going to be negative 1, and then you just negate it, and then just add y to it, and that'll give you the answer. Make sense? So you can generalize this in that sense. Now, we're going to replace x with y plus 1, and if we do, we get something like this, y plus 1 to the third power minus 3 times y plus 1 squared minus 3 times y plus 1 minus 1 equals 0. And then let's go ahead and expand everything. y cubed plus 3y squared plus 3y plus 1 minus 3y squared. Notice that that cancels out. Minus 6y minus 3 minus 3y minus 3 minus 1. A lot of minus signs, right? And that equals 0. So y squared cancels out. That was the goal. And now we have a depressed cubic, but in terms of y, but no, no problem, because we can always go back and find the x from here. y cubed, now let's go ahead and collect these. 3y and negative 3y also cancel out, so leaving us with minus 6y. And now let's go ahead and take a look at the constants. 1 and negative 1 also cancel out. We have negative 3 minus 3, which is negative 6. But guess what? We want to have that on the right-hand side. Because with the cubic formula, as you're going to see in a little bit, we do have a identity, and the constant needs to be on the right-hand side. I mean, it doesn't have to be, but that's how I usually use it. Okay, so let's go ahead and write our identity now, and we're going to use uh, that identity to come up with the cubic formula. So, the identity is as follows, and you'll hopefully remember from other videos. A plus B cubed, if you subtract, remember this is A cubed plus 3A squared B plus 3AB squared plus B cubed. Remember the two terms in the middle that has 3 in them? If you take them out and also in the factored form like this, because you can factor out 3ab, then you end up with the first and the last terms, which we will consider as constant. Here's what's going to happen. Uh, we're going to set a plus b equal to y. So this is going to be y and this is going to be y. And by comparing these two equations, we notice that we can actually set up a system of equations from here. How? Notice that the coefficient of y here is negative 3ab, and the coefficient of y in this equation is negative 6. So from here we get negative 3ab equals negative 6, which means ab equals 2. Awesome. What's the next thing? The next thing is the constant. Notice that our constant is 6 here, and our constant here is a cubed plus b cubed, which means a cubed plus b cubed is equal to 6. So that's the million dollar question. Can we find two numbers that satisfy this system? And the answer is yes, very easily, because this turns into a quadratic equation. How? Let's go ahead and cube both sides. That gives us a cubed, b cubed equals 8, and a cubed plus b cubed equals 6. So it basically reduces to finding two numbers whose product is 8 and whose sum is 6. And I'm hoping that you do know that those numbers are 
Okay, let's find out what those numbers are. Uh, suppose, pretend you didn't know it. So you can replace uh, B cubed with six minus A cubed and then go ahead and plug it in here. That gives you A cubed minus six minus A cubed equals eight. Now replace A cubed with C, another variable, so that you can turn this into a quadratic. This gives you 6C minus C squared is equal to 8. And finally, this becomes C squared minus 6C plus 8 equals 0, which can be factored as C minus 2 times C minus 4 equals 0. And as you know from here, there are two values, C equals 2 and C equals 4. Now you got to remember, a cubed is equal to C, so one of these values will be A cubed, but the other one is going to be B cubed because you're kind of talking about a quadratic equation whose, cube, whose roots are A cubed and B cubed. So they're interchangeable, it doesn't matter which one is which, but basically A is going to be the cube root of 2 and B is going to be the cube root of 4. And again, if you switch them around, it's not going to make any difference at all. But what is Y? Y is A plus B. So here's how the cubic formula works. You kind of put these together and you get one of the solutions. It doesn't give you all three solutions, but once you get a solution, the others can be found, which I'll tell you how. We're not going to find them because that's going to take a long time, but at least you'll get the idea. That's going to be left as an exercise. Don't you hate that? Okay, so this is y, but I need x. And what is x? x is equal to y plus 1. Remember, we replace x with that to uh, get rid of the quadratic term. That's how the cubic formula works. So now we're going to replace y with cube root of 2 plus cube root of 4. So we're just going to add 1 to it and that's going to give us the x value, which is kind of surprising. I wasn't expecting this type of solution, but when you see the second method, this will make more sense. And if you want to write the cube root of 4 first, because that seems to be in, I don't know, is it in numerical order, whatever, you can. Okay, because it looks like, I, I want to say the 1 is the smallest number in this case, but that's not the case. Anyways, so, so you can write in different ways. Let's go ahead and take a look at the second method, and we'll finish up with that. Second method. Now, second method is obviously much, much smarter, and I'm hoping that you've seen it first. But first method also is helpful because you kind of practice the cubic formula. Notice that on the right-hand side, if I did have x cubed, that will be a complete cube. So we're going to do the following, add x cubed to both sides. And when you do that, you're going to get 2x cubed on the left. And on the right, if you write in standard form, you're going to get a perfect cube, and that's perfect. So this is x plus 1 cubed, and this is cube root of 2 times x cubed. So I have cubes on both sides. So to get the real solution, obviously, I'll just cube root both sides, and that will give me cube root of 2 times x equals x plus 1. And then from here, I can solve for x, right? Can't I? Well, I could probably just subtract x from both sides, and then factor out the x, and that should give me something, right? Well, after division by cube root of 2 minus 1, I get the following. But wait a minute, that doesn't look like the solution we found with the first method. Yes, because we do need to rationalize the denominator. That's why you got to do it, and your teachers always tell you, rationalize the denominator. Now, how do you rationalize it though, right? I mean, when you have a cube root, what do you do? So you kind of think of it as follows. This is like an A and this is like a B. So A cubed minus B cubed is what you need to think about. Make sense? So you do need to multiply a minus b, this is a minus b by the way, by a squared plus ab plus b squared to make it difference of two cubes, therefore the radical disappears. Make sense? So under these conditions, a squared plus ab plus b squared is going to be cube root of 4 plus cube root of 2 plus 1. Does that make sense now? That should, that should be familiar to you, right, if you've seen the first method. And, of course, this product is equivalent to 2 minus 1 from difference of 2 cubes, which is 1. So this is just 1. Totally forget about it. And x is going to be the cube root of 4 plus cube root of 2 plus 1. And that will be the real solution. Now, if you wanted to find the complex solutions, obviously you can do the following. Go ahead and factor this using difference of 2 cubes. One of the solutions, one of the factors is going to be that. So kind of like this, let's say... We write it as follows. I don't know which way is better, but 
let's just say we factor like this. So one of them is going to be x plus 1 minus cube root of 2x. That's going to give you the solution we found. And the other one is going to be x plus 1 squared plus the product of x plus 1 and cube root of 2x. And finally, you're going to add cube root of 4x squared as b squared. And when you solve this quadratic, you're going to get the other two solutions. But good luck with that because that is going to be some work. And we're going to finish up with the graph of two functions. As you can see, they don't intersect because I had to zoom out like crazy. But they will eventually intersect. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.